Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to an incredible start here. You'll see African afternoon is starting to fall here, and we're sitting with the Queen of Juma, Karula, the 12-year-old female leopard, and it is a great joy to share her and... David, hello, David. Well done. And on the other vehicle, we've got Bertie, and he is being filmed today, I think, by William. That's correct. Wilson Byrne of Vermont. Now, uh, you are most welcome. You are on a live safari, like I say. And I hope that your screenshots of this magnificent... ...blurry than if you'd been swimming in the sea with your eyes open for the last two years. And I also hope that you will make lots of comment, ask us many or questions at wildearth.tv. That will be the best way to get rid of us. And not really... <laughs> I'm not sure where that comes from. That will be the best way. Byron at the moment is off in the far east, northeast, near Buffelshoek Dam. They were doing that now. And with any luck, he'll have some good news for us. We, of course, are going to stay here for as long as we can with Karula and her youngsters. That is George, the young eating the big one, and Charlotte, the other cub, is just off to the right-hand side. Sorry, I'm in your way, I think. Sorry about that, David. Do forgive me. Um, very difficult to see my monitor from where I'm sitting here. And there she is. She's just looking around. Now, this morning, see how alert she is? This morning, that kill was up in a tree, and it wasn't very easy. And, I don't know, I think she pulled it up in the night, maybe to avoid hyenas. I suspect quite strongly that one of these cubbies dropped it out of the tree by mistake. And she's decided against taking it back up, simply because it's daytime now, and I suppose the security of the light uh, that is afforded here, and the heat, would, yeah, has left her much more comfortable with the feeding here on the ground. And look at the little one. I don't know if you can see there. The little one is getting very cross with it. is a balmy 25 degrees Celsius, 77 degrees Fahrenheit. The wind seems to be blowing from the northwest, and that's the kind of warm winds that we get when they turn and they come from the southeast. It gets a bit cooler, and I think we're in for a stunning afternoon if we can spend... And almost as a sign of sort of surrender to the birds that might come an alarm call at her. ...over the course of the next little while, but I think let's just sit here. And just remember, while we sit here, we had an unbelievable morning today. We had, and we're hoping for a similar kind of afternoon, but perhaps topped off with some magnificent wild dogs. just not quite so uh, sleepy as many of the other cats. And so there's likely to be a little bit of action while we're here. Let's head across to Byron. He's at Bifflesook Dam. Good afternoon, everybody. Great to have you with us again. I am at Bifflesook Dam. My name is Byron, and with me this afternoon, we are currently trying to look for any signs of wild dog. There were reports of them crossing into this area this morning. Up until now, we've had no luck, but... Enjoying the cool water. It's a very, very warm afternoon. Beautiful afternoon. And Hippo is just trying to stay out of the sun. And just see in the frame. That because then they can submerge completely and just keep their heads above the water so that they can breathe. You notice how those eyes and ears are all situated on top and just those, those parts of the head out of the water, the vital organs that they need. Mind being a little bit exposed, they have got very sensitive skin, but the winter sun is not as harsh as the summer sun, so they don't mind 
being a little out in the open like that. And often what you may find is hippo do enjoy basking in the sun. They'll lie on the banks of a river or of a waterhole just to warm up during the day. The water, obviously, the temperature does drop quite a bit. So they'll warm up in the sun and then return back to the water later on. And in the evenings, they move out of the waterhole and go off and feed. So we're going to carry on checking around this area. Hopefully we have some luck of the wild dog. I haven't seen any sign of them just yet, but I'm not giving up. We're going to look very, very carefully and make sure or if they have moved out of the area, we want to be sure of that. And while I do that, James is still with that beautiful leopard and her cubs. Cross over to him and see what they're up to. Everybody, we're just easing into position, Dave. Tell me when. How's that for you? Because I can see, I can see the little one here right below us. Okay, and then the other two, obviously the other side there. Right, I'm going to talk very quietly. We're very close now. This little one is only about two and a half by. And then, just across and to the left, we've got Karula and the other one. That's George. There he is. Hello, Georgie boy. How lucky we are. Bethany, is this the first time that Karula has had opposite sex cubs? I was of the impression that the litter before quarantine in Konuma were the same sex. At least we're opposite sex, sorry. So I don't think that this is the first time she's had opposite sex cubs. But I might be wrong, and there are many on her Facebook page, but I think that she had two, a male and a female, before quarantine in Konuma. This is just unbelievable. That's actually Charlotte sitting with her. That's Charlotte you're looking at there, I think. I think their eyes are changing colour. Just 10 years old. Hello, Brooklyn. You know, these leopards are, you say, do they drink milk anymore? They don't, Brooklyn, and they're too old now. A six or seven year old human being. They'll be at your age, at around 10, uh, it's probably in only about a month's time. So they definitely are not suckling anymore. Remember, they will be five months old on the 2nd of July. And that's pretty soon. It's in a couple of days. Oh, this is just unbelievable. I can't believe else trying to come here. And we're sitting with Karula, the queen, and her two little ones. Oops. And rolling into the drainage line. Now, Wendy, you ask a great question, uh, to which I don't really have an answer. You say, is there a pecking order at the kill amongst the cubs? The last time I watched cubs play so little together. These chaps don't. Um, I find it a little bit strange. So is there a pecking order? No, I don't think so. I think it's probably just decided by the size of the cubs. But it seems very strange to me. Adult. Well, he's eating just like an adult. And like you had milk teeth or your baby teeth. And so I think, I think they start to fall out at roughly eight months. And his milk teeth are just smaller versions of the adult teeth. And oh, this is just, uh, people, I cannot tell you how lucky we are to be here watching these eating away, private as you like, no one else here. Hello James Dungan, great name that you're holding when I said it was a Steenbock. It's not a Steenbock, it is most certainly, remains of it is a diker, and it is the same one that she killed yesterday sometime, uh, around about this time yesterday, because there were Three 
were looking around this area, seeing if they could find anything. They found nothing. And then eventually she popped out in the afternoon as the sun was going down, put it under a weeping wattle bush just um, sort of behind where we are now. They've been on this reserve, so they haven't been south of us. We've assumed they were south of us, but they've been on the reserve because she certainly didn't fetch them from south of us. The kill was in the tree just above us. And now they're still feeding on it. And I suspect if they are still here this evening, she'll put it back into they need to. The cubs can eat in safety. And Dave, if you go back to the other one, it seems she sees... <laughs> playing with mum. Isn't that nice? Um, female probably about 18 months she'll go. She will be gone by the time she's 18 months. He will probably hang around around about 18 months. Through life from here it's really not easy for them at all. Do you want to try and go forward? I'm just going to depress the clutch slightly everybody. Hold on tight. Don't let go. They went. There we are. Oh, look at that. Well spotted, David. Isn't that awesome? Now, leopards can go more in or independent earlier than that if they have to. A classic example, of course, being young Sandile, who was forced to go early because he ate that rabid dog. Shadow's other grandson, who's called Sindila, ate a rabid dog, or caught a rabid dog, earlier on this year. And when that happened, and he's been re-released into the wild, so he's now just about 21 months old. And he's managing somehow to survive absolutely So, you know, leopard cubs can go independent much earlier than the textbooks will tell you. And we know, for example, that there was an exam, and it's just three months from now, and it was a female, obviously. The males are much less good at that sort of thing. The males tend to be fairly poor at uh, going independent, a bit like human beings, of course. They like the comforts of home. Ah, oh, it's wonderful. And there's a little bit of fluffy white fur on the belly. It'd be spent, I feel, David, don't you? Mm. <laughs> Tuesday afternoon. Quite. There's Wee George still eating his meal. Right back here. So, unfortunately, no luck just yet. I saw their tracks from this morning, but it's very difficult to gauge which direction they've moved off. Just going to drive around this area a little bit more, once more, just to have a good look. Um, and that's how it goes. Often wild dog, you know, we left them or lost them this morning at about 9 o'clock, so they were still very active. So... Good afternoon, Corey, and welcome to your co-workers, Tori and Tracy, who are joining us for the first time. It's great to have you on Earth. So, Tori and Tracy, Corey has asked me to explain to you what you can expect from a safari. And this is a time when a lot of the animals, or most of the animals, are active. It's nice and cool temperatures, and you may, may still get a lot of predators moving around. A lot of the predators are nocturnal, like lion and leopard. And then with those cool conditions, you do get a lot of bird life active and the animals are still moving around quite a bit, especially now in winter. In the mornings, the predators do tend... To, we had a report of them around this dam this morning, this Biffles Hook Dam. But I unfortunately cannot see any sign of them. We came and looked. But as I said, it was about 9 o'clock we got to this area and it was still cool. So they would just bump into them. On what else can you expect on a safari? You can usually expect uh, some afternoon snacks. If 
It's a really nice time to stretch your legs, get out. Your guide will show you some of the smaller things around while you're walking. And, uh, and then while you're driving around, hopefully hear and see everything that he does and then ask a lot of questions while you're out. I hope that answers your question about what to expect on a safari. But I think the best is if we're going to carry on just checking around this area for a brief while, see if we don't see any sight. Now, it's not a very bad thing that Byron hasn't found those dogs yet, I tell you, because all the eastern boundary and the northern boundary and the tracks have not gone across. There's a very, very good chance that they're lying up in the shade and that they will start to move as it gets a bit cooler. Let's be patient, as Byron is no doubt being patient. And let's hope that he manages to find the dogs as they come out for the evening. Into the shade, coming back towards the kill. And while you were gone, young Georgie over here, who's now getting very cross with his mum, he's pulling his ears back and going... While he were away, he picked that geica up, and it must already weigh. I mean, he, like we were discussing this morning, it probably weighs about twice what he does. Now, the queen is just down there. You can see her. <laughs> I'm just trying to stay out of the way. She's rocked in front of us here. I'm going to talk very quietly, and that's the one calling. Did you hear that? Going... I think that was Charlotte calling her. Charlotte is now coming down towards the kill. Karula is very close. She's turned around. She's, she's going down there. Sorry, David. There's not much I can do, I'm afraid. Ah, now she's gone to sleep right in the deep shade there where we have absolutely no... A nice question from you. What would I do if these cubs approached us and tried to interact with us. I think at this stage Karula is comfortable enough not to worry. So I've certainly been in situations where leopard cubs become so comfortable with the vehicles that they walk under the car, lie down under the car in exactly the same way perhaps you've seen the hyena cubs do and they'll become that calm while that was happening and if we sat still and we didn't sort of give the cub a fright I think she wouldn't have an issue with it. Look, look, Davy, I don't know if you can see the tail. Now, oh, Cathy, can you hear her making a noise? There, look, 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 going up the tree. She's a hook. And Cathy, as I say that, I'm keeping an eye on Karula. Oh, wow. you hear her making that little squealing sound? She's just entertaining herself now. This is purely for entertainment. Maybe if I sit up, is it going to be all right? <laughs> oh, wow. Isn't that amazing how dexterous they are? Hello, little Charlotte. Simply because I think that she's eaten before he has, and then I feel almost like she... David, do you think the world's slowest photographer... Sorry, Robin, I've missed your question. Can we have it again, please, Becca? Look at this. This is unbelievable. Rebecca, Robin's question. It isn't decided so much as she will just make space wherever there happens to be less pressure on whichever border there happens to be less pressure. <laughs> that looked like me climbing out of a tree. Hello. I'm surprising I didn't get one photograph.
look up here, leopard. So, Robin, um, what will happen is, she's still there, what will happen is that um, when she gets bigger, Karula's territory will just kind of shrink slightly. Now, on her southern boundary, of course, we know that Shadow's there, Tandy's also there. So it probably won't be from the south, but to the north of her, I think there's much less activity from female leopards. So you'll probably find, I'm going to guess here, that she'll occupy a piece of northern Biffleshook. Remember, Karula's not young anymore, and so it is natural for her, there they go, it's natural for her territory to shrink slightly now as she gets a bit older. And so I'm going to guess that if young Charlotte makes it to independence, which we fervently hope that she will, I think you'll find that she will end up in Biffle's Hook on the northern reaches of Karula's territory. And then when Karula di dies, passes on to Leopard Heaven, which eventually she must, uh, what you will find, I think, is that that territory will close in. Shadow will come further east, um, Tandy will come further north, and you'll probably find that this cub, unless she has another female cub after this, well, they'll kind of take over that, this core area on Juma. But that is many years away. Well, it could be tomorrow if some horrible accident occurs with Karula. But, you know, all things being equal, that's what would happen. Wasn't that amazing? <laughs> that was just too fantastic. David, I didn't get a photograph of that, if you can believe it. Oh, James. Hello, Tasha. Hey, while we watch Georgie there gorging himself, Georgie gorging on... Well, I think that this kill will probably last them about four days. Here's the opportunity if she goes off to mark territory and finds a Stienbuk lying in her p become very hungry, I don't think, for the next three or four days. This is a good meal for them. A nice adult male diker is a good meal for a female leopard. Well, not while Charlotte was in the tree. Good to see this interaction. But we'll just try and place how the relationship is between mum and son and then George and Charlotte. Now Charlotte's run to the kill. Look at that, they won't eat together. Well, Georgie's on his own. This is just accept and remember it. Take your screenshots and load your memory banks with what is truly a remarkable sight All right, let's quickly go back to Byron and get an update from him. What we have found, everybody, a beautiful female kudu, and there's a young male just behind her. They're both very curious watching us. See a young male, his horns have just started. They're only about the length of his ears. They form almost like a corkscrew shape. Very, very beautiful turns. And look at those wonderful pink ears. The kudu do enjoy thickets, tiffle white chevron between the eyes. Now, that, that is there for a reason. So the kudu have evolved in a way. That arcing around the eye or the chevron allows light to be reflected to the eyes and that allows them to see a lot better in the dark shadows or in the thickets. And you can see it very, very, they're very curious. They're just standing watching us. Look at those wonderful white stripes on them. They really are very, very well. Looks as though that female is chewing the cud. See how she, she's chewing there. So all antelope in Africa, are ruminants, which means they have a specific digestive system. What these antelope do is they feed four-chambered stomach, and the food is 
or moves down into the stomachs into the stomach it is then mixed with some enzymes and digestive fluids and it is regurgitated known as chewing the cud just like cows do and buffalo they re-chew the food they break it down even further and they sw swallow it again so it's a very efficient digestive system. They get all the nutrients they possibly can. Almost looks like <laughs> that kudu has had a sip of milk and has got a milk. For all of you, who have just joined us and who are new viewers or you can email us questions at wildearth.tv myself or James will hopefully answer your questions for you I'm trying to see there was some Inyala that moved through here too another species of antelope and look continue though and see what else we can find along the way really nice for those two kudu to pose for us so beautifully they're still standing there Really, really great to see these different antelope in this area. So James was showing you leopards earlier and the cubs climbing in and out of the trees. And he was saying it looks like the one cub fell out of the tree or got down from the tree like he did the other day. I don't think anything could fall out of a tree like James did. A very, very terrible dismount if you ask me. But he is still with them. Go back and see what they are up to. Charlotte is voraciously eating everybody. Look at her devouring that diker hungrily. I'm very interested that she and George don't seem to feed together. I think that's quite interesting. I don't know what it means exactly, but I do think it's quite interesting. And, I mean, if she was dominant over him, or if there was some kind of dominance at play, I, you know, I imagine that she, um, she would have she wouldn't have waited for him to leave. And maybe she feels that she needs the security of mum. We've seen him eating on his own twice. He certainly did that last time they had a kill. He spent a lot of time on his own feeding and she and mum stayed in the tree. And I think that's quite telling. What a joy. Now the wind has switched slightly. I mean, that's not particularly relevant to our game drive, but it does probably mean now it was blowing northwest earlier. And uh, what that means for George and Charlotte? Well, probably absolutely nothing at all. And Karula just gone to sleep. beautifully by this apple leaf tree. It's not an apple leaf tree, David, at all. It's a milkberry, a uh, milkwood, milkberry, milkwood. Manolcara mochisa, my favorite tree out here. And all is complete, magnificent, wonderful peace. There's that rattling cysticula calling off in the background. <laughs> Tin spot battus alarm calling. A couple of starlings flying overhead, no doubt the vulture high in the sky if I look up. No, no vulture. Now we are going to be joined a little bit later at about four o'clock by the teachers technical conference of Virginia Beach, Virginia and so we'll be welcoming them. It's not a school drive, in other words there aren't kids there, they're all teachers having a look at what we do and I think assessing if they would like to incorporate this as part of their curriculum. I think it would be quite fun to look at this when you're at school, don't you? Rather than having somebody writing on a blackboard, although I don't suppose they do that anymore,
Ah, now, Mitch, you make a very good point there. You say, what territory will Shadow give her that Shadow's cubs, uh, or Shadow's cub is a female, uh, I've called her Zara, and where Zara will go in Kanyeni, um, Kwatile. Kwatile has shaken off this mortal coil uh, at the, through the medium of a snake bite, so she's no longer alive. And I think that territory, as far as I can work out, is probably open. So I'm going to guess that if Zara makes it through the difficult period of life that she's in now, I suspect that's where she'll go. If that makes sense, it was a very astute question, that. Look at them eating, eating, eating away there. And I'm sure there are going to be elephants and buffalo going towards the water. For us to have this unbelievable pleasure of, of winter, I mean, I can't believe that this is a midwinter's day. I always found it amazing. I'm just going to have to talk on the radio quickly. So everybody is now starting to get mobile, so we won't be able to have you look. There's a, George is going for a little walkabout. He's just, he's just straight over the top here. There we go. That's him. And you can see, as he started to move, you maybe heard those birds going, chip, 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 chip. Now, I cannot actually believe this, but Byron has managed to find yet another Varose eagle owl. That's right, James. We have found another giant eagle owl. This is beautiful. <laughs> Just a lucky spot. We actually stopped to have a look at a nest in the tree and then spotted this beautiful Varose eagle owl or giant eagle owl. The largest owl we have in this area. Very, very large, about 60 centimeters in, in height. It's a very big and I hope he turns his head again and looks at us. They've got beautiful pink eyelids and this owl is just hiding in the canopy trying to get a bit of, get out of the sunlight and rest during the day. And late in the evening, it will fly out and go off and hunt. And if you have a look lower down, just look at those talons that that owl has. Very, very sharp. And luckily, VM is able to zoom right in there. Look at that. Those are some serious, serious talons. And they will catch a number of different prey, especially scrub hair, little nocturnal hairs which come out. These giant eagle owls will be able to hunt them. What a beautiful, or during the day at least, because often they, they hide in even thicker trees than this. But this is a nice canopy, it's well sheltered. And later it'll probably move off and go and hunt. Look at those feathers on top of its head, it almost looks like they are ears. If you can see that, if the head turns towards us, you might see it a bit clearer. But you can see those feathers blowing in the wind. Little tufts of feathers above the head look just like ears. This is the fourth giant eagle owl I have, found, I have seen in the last, last four, three days, four days. So that is really, really great. I've got a deep booming sound. Mm. Mm. Mm, very deep, deep sound. It's my attempt at a giant eagle owl call, but it's not very good. There we go, look at those eyes. Those pink, bright, bright pink eyelids. Occasionally, if they do feel a little disturbed, they'll fly off. This one's quite relaxed, just watching us. surprise. It is sitting in a beautiful torchwood tree or green thorn. Lovely tree. Look, 
huge tree and you can see it's not easily easily seen and now that you've or it's been pointed out you can see it clearly but if you're just driving past it may sometimes just look like one of the branches look at that stem of the tree very distinct almost looks like it is twisted so very easily identifiable the torchwood and that owl looks as if it is very happy there and is probably going to stay there for quite some time don't want to disturb it, don't want it to fly off, so I think we're going to leave it, but I'm so glad we were able to show it to you, it really is a wonderful bird to see. They are up to you. Just eating and eating and eating and eating, that's what's going on here, and we're not going to be here for too much longer everyone, so let's just enjoy this, simply what a rare joy but we're going to stay for as long as we can. Our little Charlotte has her meal, her tea. You're happy. So we'll stay here. Lex is coming in. Karula's fast asleep. George has gone off onto the north. He's She's listening to. Her mum's not moving, but her mum's head is up. I'm just going to talk to Lex quickly. Lex, come in. I think I've given him some bum directions, I'm afraid. Anyway, now I'm done. Lex, come in, Lex. Lex, um, I've obviously confused the issue. Um, I meant the other bank, so the, the Western Bank, exactly where you were coming in. I mean, you can, you can get through the drainage. Sorry, I'm just helping them get the best view. Lex, of course, found them yesterday. He very cleverly gave his guests some drinks just around Voyatella Dam, Juma Dam, yesterday evening. And Karula popped out to their little babies. Now, oh, let's just give you the lay of the land. You can see Karula's turned around completely. Um, let me just help Lex quickly here. Now, you heard me mention Lex. Lex, of course, has been guiding in this area for nigh on 35 years. And he and the work that he did with the owners of Londolozi are some of the reasons that we are watching leopards here to this day. They did such a tremendous job of habituating leopards. Is it right? He's just the other side. He's just behind that mound. I think that's a little female feeding. And so, I mean, we had a question this morning about how it is that we we're able to watch these leopards like this and it's just through time. And now we've got created a situation where there are generations of youngsters who have now grown up into adults who have had their own youngsters all over the Sabi Sands to the extent that now if you come to the Sabi Sands and you don't see a leopard, it's almost, um, well, it's almost unheard of. It's highly unlikely that where you t should you come here, you wouldn't have an amazing sighting of it. Oh, the iron is on fire with a little slender mongoose. It's hang on, it's still in an area. Uh, there's a moving view, I'm trying very hard 
to show you a very shy little mongoose. It's moving through the back there. Hang on, come on. So, a little slender mongoose is a part of the mongoose family. They are they are um, very solitary. They're not like other mongoose who live in large family groups. Uh, we've lost him, unfortunately. He ran away from us. But if you have a look, I've got a picture of one. Look at this a beautiful slender mongoose. And they've got that bright red, very dark black strip or tip. And then the mongoose, but very shy little animal, and they'll run through the thickets looking for birds' nests, birds' eggs, anything like that that they'll feed on. And they may also briefly, and then it ran into a thicket. Very, very shy. Oh, so, but we're finding great little stuff this afternoon. It's wonderful. Let's see what else I can find. But while we're doing that, let's cross back to James quickly for an update. Now, there's George, everybody. He's just across the way. And he's snoozing. And like his le leopards always do, and like he will have to do for the rest of his days, he will be unable to snooze completely at peace. way that a lion does and I'm sure many of you heard me say that before but lions you can have sleeping completely dead to the world because they're they sleep a bit then they look, look up and then they put their heads down they look up again every so often and that's simply because they cannot afford to take a risk that something might happen upon them so the slightest scent on the wind the slightest crunch of a leaf, the slightest kind of hint that there's something amiss, they waken them up. And that's not because I'm tremendously stealthy, it's just because they are so confident that they go completely to sleep in the same way that we as human beings do. There's Charlotte now trying to move the carcass. So far we haven't had to move out, which is fantastic. There are two lions just near the Duma Dam. And those lions lurking about there somewhere. And Charlotte, just like her brother, using those carnassial teeth. Those, those molars, those sharp, sharp scissor-like molars puppy's teeth. They're exactly the same, Gracie. They come out the same way that little puppy's teeth come out, and then they get big teeth in the same way that your teeth are now coming out, Gracie. Uh, maybe not all of them, but um, certainly when you get and well, a bit like my teeth did. Well, my teeth didn't, actually, but uh, most. <laughs> Is that why you were clearing your throat? You see David was clearing his throat. Um, <laughs> so, Gracie, it's exactly the same as with puppies. Every single mammal in the world has teeth that come out. <laughs> David? Yes, sir. Next time, maybe just a sort of... <coughs> suppose... Okay, I was, I was too involved with my question answering. I don't know if you can hear. A beautiful cape glossy starling. Okay. And thank you for your question. You say, is it possible that the hissing that George is doing at his mother could be interpreted by his sister as aggression and therefore he st she stays away from the car carcass when he's there. Betty, I don't think that's the case, no. I think uh, that's just normal, as leopards will always have to fight for their food, and so they start very early. De Make your way straight here, Orbs. I'll move out um, as soon as the fourth station arrives. Trying to think which side would be best. 
I guess this side, he's not going to see anything from the other side, is he, Dave? Gosh, we have been so lucky. So, Betty, you know, these leopards um, are, they're by nature completely solitary. They, by nature, will have to defend their food. And so it starts at a very early age. And you'll find lion cubs doing exactly the same.